old Slavic pagan culture was consisted of numerous rituals and traditions connected with gods, spirit and nature. Some of them were harmless, but some was full of cruelty and horror, and probably a nowadays person would never understand it, cause we got used to another reality already, but that times it was a part of being something natural and obvious. Today we are going to know five the most cruel, bloody and terrifying traditions of Slavic people, which will send you shivers with only a thought of this could happen in real. Hi, I'm Stacy and we are talking about the other side of Russia. So grab something strong, make yourself comfortable and don't forget to hit the subscribe button on the bell to know more about old Slavic life and traditions. And we are starting. Overbreaking of a baby I've already mentioned this popular ritual in one of my previous videos about mythological Slavic character Baba Yaga. I leave the link for you here, right here, long time ago, when the baby was born weak, ill or before the term. He was getting overbaked in a big Russian stove. Before getting the baby to a stove, mother covered him with a rye dough with only mouth and nose left uncovered. Then she put him on the bread shovel and placed the shovel into a warm stove for several seconds. The stove was represented as a mother's womb, warm and cozy. Also, the Russian stove was a place of connection with ancestors and the area energetically strong and important thing in everyday life of Slavic people. Sometimes it happened that the stove was not cooled down enough or the dough being baked could close the mouth and the nose of a baby. Then some accident could have happened and the baby didn't survive, but it was referred to God's will and that is just must have happened to this very baby. Killing the relatives As soon as the Slavic girl got married, and they usually got married at the age of 13, she was always pregnant. Slavic families usually had just enormous quantity of kids and giving birth to a boy was a priority because they could become supporters and defenders of a family more quickly than girls. And girls were not as valuable, so if the family had enough girls already, the mother could even kill the newborn or give her the sacrifice. In case of Troy, she could drop the baby or crack her head with a stone. If there was a bad harvest time there and to dig her to his soil alive. This way Slavic asked the gods to give them what they needed. It was thought that the babies have more energy and potential, so they were more valuable as a sacrifice. Also, the younger Slavic could kill the elders in the family because they couldn't work anymore or suffered from some serious diseases. It wasn't really profitable to feed a family member who couldn't work in the field or help about the house, and this was quite common. Old relatives were ready to end their lives from the hand of their kids. Self-sacrifice of a wife or so-called co-dying. When a husband died due to any circumstances, his wife should have committed suicide on his funerals, showing her love and affection to him. And it was obligatory. Girls were prepared for this moment since the very young age. If the woman refused to go to the underworld together with her husband, the society made her regret her decision and could even kill her in front of many judging people. If the man was of some high status and had three or more wives, then one of them, the most loving or his favorite one, went together with him. Some of such rituals were described by poets and travelers. Ibn Rusteh, in his book of precious treasures, wrote 
if the deceased had three wives and one of them claimed that she loved him, then she brings two pillars to the corpse and then she put two of them to the ground and the third she put a cross in the middle. She stands on the bench and ties the end of the rope around her neck. When she is done, the bench is taken from under her feet and she remains hanging until she suffocates and dies. And after death, she is thrown into the fire to burn. Another terrifying case described in history in the prosthetic Oleg funerals. When he died, his wives were asked who is going to die together with the husband, and one of them agreed. The girl put both her legs to the man's arms. I see you, my lord. Take me to him. And they took her to the funeral ship. Then six men raped her, saying, Tell your lord that you did it because of big love for him. They hit her on her cheeks to silent her screams. Then they put her on the side near her husband and the old woman called the angel of death put a rope around her neck and gave it sense to two men and let them pull it. The old woman started to stick a dagger between her ribs over and over again till the wife is dead. Then man took the body to the funeral ship together with her husband, his treasures, food and cattle, and the close relative put the ship on fire and let it go. Another variant is to be buried alive with her husband in a funeral house made like a tomb, together with armor, food, dinner, cattle, sacrifices and pieces of furniture from the house they lived in. The Masudi, Arabic traveler, wrote in 10th century, when the man dies, then his wife burned with him alive. If the woman dies, her husband do not get burned. The women wanted to be burned, to enter the heaven together with their husbands. Sacrifices it was the most popular pagan ritual. Slavic had two kinds of sacrifices. Bloody, like humans and animals, and not bloody. Bread, meat, wine and other. Slavic made bloody sacrifices in the most difficult periods of time as hunger, lack of harvest, droughts, to pay the gods' attention to the problem and solve it as soon as possible. The proof we can find in the book of Lev Diakon, Svetoslav warriors took corpses and burned them. Many prisoners, men and women, were killed. According to the ancestors' custom, having made this bloody sacrifice, they struggled several babies and roosters, drowning them in the waters of Istra. The Arabic traveler Ibn Rusteh wrote that Slavic had healers who could give orders even to a king. It happened sometimes. They could say that their gods need a sacrifice of anything, like man, woman, horse. And it should have been done anyway. They took a human or an animal, put a rope to their neck and hanged him on the beam, waiting till the victim suffocates. And then they said it's a sacrifice to their god. A child or a newborn sacrifice was the most precious, because it has a lot of potential. Trophies The most significant trophies Slavic men took from a battlefield were cut off heads of victims. It was an honor to take a head and make a cup of its skull. Such cups were decorated with jewels and precious metals. It was thought that the evil spirit won bother the owner of such cup. Some heads were put on pikes and set around the city to warn the enemies and protect the area. Nowadays such traditions seem wild and cruel, but we should 
take into consideration the different moral ethics standards of the time. Deaths and sacrifices were just a part of the life. Slavic people were prepared to these standards from the very childhood and it was an honor to end the life for the glory of the gods. And we have no right to judge now, being already a part of another world. So hope guys you enjoyed the video, what do you think about those bloody tradition? Maybe you have some in your culture. Leave the comment down below, give this video a thumbs up or down as you feel it to be, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, not to miss anything and I'm leaving you not for so long. See you in the next video, bye!